Good evening and welcome to Praying the Psalms in Lent. Each night we're reading and reflecting together on a psalm from the Bible and from it taking inspiration to pray for God's blessing on ourselves and on our world. Tonight we're going to be reading Psalm 76. So if you have a Bible or maybe a Bible app on your phone or your iPad, then you may want to turn to that now. There's also a link to an online version of tonight's psalm with this video. To begin, let's light a candle. If you have one at home, you are welcome to light yours with me. And we light these candles as a symbol of the light of Christ. His light shines in the darkness and his light cannot be extinguished. So as I enter prayer now, I pause to be still. To breathe slowly, to recenter my scattered and anxious thoughts upon the presence of God. Dear Father, as I offer myself to you in this moment, help me to turn away from my own small self-centred view of the world and to see your much more expansive view of me and of your world. I invite you to reshape my soul and to help me respond to the world around me with your compassion. Amen. Tonight's Psalm, Psalm 76, appears to be, how can I put it, a very Israel uh, or Jerusalem centered Psalm. And it is that, but we need to read it carefully because what's at the center is not really the greatness of a, of a nation or a capital, a what, if you like. What's at the center is a who, that who being almighty God himself. Whilst it stood, the temple in Jerusalem was not primarily a place of sacrifice, but the place of God's presence. The psalmist writes, in God is renowned in Judah. In Israel, his name is great. His tent is in Salem, his dwelling place in Zion. In the Old Testament, Salem is the old Jebusite name for Jerusalem. Zion is a word often used to refer to Jerusalem as the focal point of God's presence among his people. This is the place of his tent. This is where God camps out or dwells. This is why the ancient people of God were so passionate about Jerusalem and in particular the temple. They longed, as we all do deep inside, for the presence of God. For us, the amazing truth is that through Jesus, we can know the presence of God who dwelt in the Jerusalem temple in and among us, his people, wherever we are. I was uh, rereading the passage um, in Luke's gospel earlier this week, where Jesus, near the beginning of his ministry, uh, uh, returns to his childhood home of Nazareth. And in that familiar setting, in his familiar old, sy syn old synagogue, on the Saturday, he is invited to read that day's scripture to the congregation. And Jesus reads from the book of Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then 
he announces, referring to himself, you've just heard scripture make history. It's come true just now in this place. And as I reread those words, it hit me with awesome weight that the spirit of the Lord, who was indeed upon Jesus throughout his life to say the amazing things that he said, to do the wonderful things that he did, who is the same Holy Spirit who dwelt in the Jerusalem temple. He is the one who deigns to live in us, in me, me. The church, meaning followers of Jesus, not the buildings they meet in, we are his temple the place where he would have his presence dwell. Now that is both an awesome privilege and awesome responsibility. Verse four to 12 of this psalm, uh, the psalmist uses to describe the awesome otherness, power and might and majesty of God. And these words only help to reinforce this incredible privilege and responsibility of my being God's dwelling place. And for me, it drives me to prayer, as I hope it might you too. So let's read uh, together Psalm 72 and then uh, let it take us into prayer together. Psalm 76. God is renowned in Judah. In Israel, his name is great. His tent is in Salem, his dwelling place in Zion. There he broke the flashing arrows, the shields and the swords, the weapons of war. You are radiant with light, more majestic than mountains rich with game. The valiant lie plundered, they sleep their last sleep. Not one of the warriors can lift his hands. At your rebuke, God of Jacob, both horse and chariot lie still. It is you alone who are to be feared. Who can stand before you when you are angry? From heaven you pronounced judgment, and the land feared and was quiet. When you, God, rose up to judge, to save all the afflicted of the land. Surely your wrath against mankind brings you praise, and the survivors of your wrath are restrained. Make vows to the Lord your God and fulfil them. Let all the neighbouring lands bring gifts to the one to be feared. He breaks the spirit of rulers. He is feared by the kings of the earth. In a prayerful uh, exercise, I invite you to take a look again at verses one and two of tonight's psalm. God is renowned in Judah. In Israel, his name is great. His tent is in Salem, his dwelling place in Zion. Judah, Israel, Salem, Zion. Now, I invite you to carefully reread those two sentences again, but to replace those place names with either your own name or the personal pronoun me. God is renowned in me. In Israel, in me, his name is great. His tent is in me, his dwelling place in me. What feelings come to mind when you hear uh, those words with you involved? Let's pray. Lord, I long for your presence with me. 
But as I consider what it means for me and my messy, sinful human life to be as, as Zion, your holy tent, a place for you to dwell and act on earth, I am reminded of the words of an old communion prayer. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us. Lord, thank you that through Jesus, our Lord and Saviour, you have cleared the ancient barrier to our being able to come into your holy presence and for your holy presence to dwell among us. Through his sacrificial, sacrificial death on the cross in our place, the heavy curtain in the temple that symbolised the lawful separation of us from you was torn in two from top to bottom. Lord, you are indeed the God of our salvation, and we have not and cannot contribute anything to what you have done for us through Christ. It is all you, all your amazing grace, and we are humbled and deeply grateful. Thank you that you choose to make your dwelling place on earth today with and among your people. So tonight, I pray, please fill me again with your Holy Spirit. May he burn as fire to cleanse me of my sinful nature and be in me an attractive blaze to draw others to you. May he blow in me as strong wind to disturb and scatter what is unnecessary to life in me, and to be the wind in my sails to guide me in your way. And may he flow and come as rivers of living water to touch every part of my dry and dusty life, to make it abundantly fruitful with good gifts to share with others, to the glory and renown of Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's pray for our world and those around us using the words of this prayer. O High King of Heaven, have mercy on our land. Revive your church. Send your Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost, the least and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you for joining us uh, once again uh, tonight. Please feel free to tune in again at 7pm tomorrow night when for the penultimate episode in this series, Michael will take us through Psalm 77. But for now, good night and God bless and may the peace of the Lord be with you. Amen.